I yeah, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Um, no, not really. Sorry. Let's look inside. Should I turn up the boombox inside this library or this bookstore? Causing too much noise. All right, let's try and like click on all the on the thought bubbles. Might as well do that. Oh, I could look behind there, I think. Um, look up there. Look over there. Oh wait, there's something here. Everyone knows the most important thing about fascists was their ma magic. Interessante. Another boring break, just discard here. Okay, that's all I want to do. Oh, what's this over here? This looks like a map. Yeah, several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the all cave. Um, they're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps all oh, okay, you catch a glimpse of all the maps here. Look at the map of Revishaw. La Delta it says a great artificial heart in the century, teeming with life forms and construction. And to the east, rolling hillsides of all those places they sound rich to you. This is Revishaw East, the west of the river. Quran is somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock, it's not bad. People shouldn't be shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Frombrang, it's almost as bad and much larger than Cold City, and then worse, and Merton East. It's so small you can't even see on the map. No way, there it is. North of the Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the great Greater River Shaw Industrial Harbor. It looks like downright despondent. It's almost Cold City, to be honest. Um, no, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Secrets and solemn lights. Sky and the world, you're still alive. I'm sorry, the map of Merton is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. Besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable. Although, they might not look at the map of Merton is nice sense, though. Why is the map of one Maritanese? Okay, you seem to understand my resources, but sure, okay. Steal it instead? Yeah, you know, I can't steal it. It's pretty risky to steal that. Um, also don't have, yeah, pretty risky to do that. I think there's something I could do with this. Oh, I could do that. Nothing, please go back to pounding. Don't feel compelled to look at the book. The books are all you care about. She speaks as almost as if she's trying to put a spell on your origin to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she draws, yeah, are we away from the curtains? The more luring they become. Um, just as you're about to pull apart the curtain, the petrified voice of the shopkeeper cries out once more. Sir, don't touch it. I told you it's off limit for customers. Her hands are closed around the pendant. Her nervous, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. Too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Is this is is this is about the curse. That's why you're afraid. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now please step away from, from the curtains. Uh, she's almost begging you. My sense, this place is calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do. She grabs her pendant again, visibly shaken. My God, even more reason to not mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Man, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stopped abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so polite. Just please don't go in there. I can't allow it. You only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly, not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. I'm opening them. No, she raises her hand to try and stop you. Just please, just talk to me, officer. Come here, 
and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. There's something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Alright. Step back. I'll step back for now. Let's talk. I'll talk. I'll talk for a bit. What's behind the curtains? Esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Uh, why are you so uptight? What was that noise? Um, why are you so uptight about these curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you it's a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. Um, yeah, I guess then why does it have a serious media war protecting it? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into the, a type, tight lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed, just like Anionette said. They don't call it the Doom commercial area for nothing. Are you happy, officer? Happy that you ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something into her pendant. Host of hosts, she guards guard me in my honest business ventures from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How did this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around in the dimly lit store. The curse is so much worse than you can imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. There's a curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't that, didn't that curtain just move? I don't know. I didn't notice. Um... Oh yeah, and Annette had mentioned that the previous tenants had experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. Is that cacao demons feeding off bad business practice and disappointing income and statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I sense an eerie, lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Strange, I feel unwanted too. What does it mean? Really so. Her eyes narrow as she tries to get a read on your energy. Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off of you. She didn't stay in the in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes, I contacted numerous uh, parapsychologists and even a pair of Siamese meditators. They provide me with the words. She nods at the strange cage like trinket on the curtains. The words help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pen in part of the word as well? Oh, this? She pulls the pen in her hand. No, it's a special human amulet. Blessed by Desert Per... Pinejimi? Shaman. With a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell. She ex for example, she nods. It's guaranteed to boot sale 15%. I, he's crazy. This sounds v like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Desert, Ijimi shamans. Yeah, I could investigate to see if this coast is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone familiar with this, with the psychic arts, to get involved in this meth mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. Psychotic? No. Psychic. Psychic. Yeah, psychic arts. Uh, convince her to let you investigate the Doom commercial area. Might as well as a white check. Damn. Yeah, I don't want to say all that. No, it's really stupid. Um, all the pressure has been on your net. Really anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails? I told her not to do that. She'll get over anxiety is part of life. A part of hers, too. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can. If she has enough willpower, this is what it's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, man. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You're placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. Um, this is That is true. And then obviously the will of the market. But maybe make an exception for your daughter. <laughs> Uh, what, what are you doing this wrong? Even I know that. I usually don't know anything. 
Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, also the will of the market, but st still, make. Ah. Yeah, it's a kid. I don't care. It's, it's a kid. They stand stiff and severe, suddenly fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. He's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. All of a sudden, she exhales sharply. Her shoulders, her shoulders slump down. Oh no, she butters. Hold on, I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. She returns to... Oh, cool. Oh, there she is, in the corner. Right here. There, she returns with a knock. I don't know what to say. My husband, he tries to teach me in business lesson. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress, she stops, but her mouth keeps moving. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats Annunette. You're like Annunette to your husband and your mother. Oh. She nudges her glasses nervously. Well, my mother was horrible, of course. Actually, preserved energies around that person. But my husband, she shakes her head. Her husband's completely different, of course. Hmm. Is this husband Annette's father? Yes, my husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we were running up here, she says gloomily. No matter soon, we'll be off for a grand corin. What's that? It's a proper place to live, one of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for his massive housing project. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. Her smile is wide. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you call a silent partner. Super silent. Almost inaudible soul. Is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat. Threat. Treat? Treat. She is. It would be nice if she had. Um, she paused for a second. No. Couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. A glimmer of sadness... Blinks through the well-crafted exterior. Why not? We're quite busy people, you know. My husband and I are quite busy. Her voice ravers a bit. Children are a lot of work. You don't look like a father, so I don't expect you to understand. She catches herself at her in the place. I'm sorry. I'm sure you do understand. She told me she didn't. She doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here, so she studies at home this trimester. It is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, of all the people understand the importance of education... I'm a, I, of all people, understand the importance of education. Uh, she will be back at school the moment the store takes off. And hell freezes over. Never mind, it's not a good topic to get into. Uh, and I conclude it. Uh, yeah. Go talk to Annette. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. <laughs> um, help her in. What are you feel? What are you missing here? Why does this feel familiar? Hey, because you know each other. She's been talking to you so openly before you talked before. Maybe I shouldn't remember. There's a reason for that. Hang on. So you know me. We've met before. Yes, I used to stand out there all the time before mother told me to focus on my homework. You've been running around all week without your shirt. <laughs> Wait, what? Without my shirt on? Apologizing to everyone. I don't really understand what you've done wrong. Did I ever talk to you? Of course, you stopped by a few times. She looks at you intently. Intently. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. <laughs> Thanks, I'm trying. Yeah, I can see that. You don't have party eyes anymore. The lieutenant slowly, ever so slowly, realized something. Party eyes. Yes, of course, that makes sense. I'm not surprised children have seen you running around with the party eyes on. He thinks, not at all. Party eyes. You know, like a cat in the dark, all big and wide eye. She giggles at the thought. It certainly looks odd in a man. The swivel eyes of a loony drug addict. This is what she'd meant. You were probably gurning, too? Good thing she didn't say party eyes loud. Her mother's nearby. Fuck okay, yeah, you should probably get some party eyes right now. Snap those squinums on you, boy. 
Doesn't that mean I've been partaking in narcotics? Oh, baby, that's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. So why didn't you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. Oh, uh, true. Uh, I don't really like this detective deduction game anymore. Thanks, I learned something about myself today. I'm glad I could help you, sir. I like getting it. Math. Uh, she looks into her note. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, looks into notebook with trip, trepidation. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need to get rich better than standing outside in the cold. I guess. Suddenly, she smiles and perks up, remembering something. Oh, oh! I found something while you're away. What is it? Dick Mullins. Oh, the hat. The, the, the tech that we're talking about. I thought this would fit you. She gives you a hat, almost exactly like the one Dick Mullen wears on covers. Like, thanks for helping me. Not me, the city, I mean, like a detective does. A detective hat. Yes, just like the one Dick Mullen wears all the time, she grins. You look, you'll look way more serious with that. Suddenly, she looks back at the inferno scribbling under her nose. Right, I have to get back to the homework before Mom notices. Man, this is hard. Man, what an awesome girl. Those. Ooh. Yo, look at me. <laughs> me with a boombox as well. <laughs> um, it's a pretty good cool haul now. Especially the encyclopedia went up by one now. Now it's net three instead of two. Um, bonus from thoughts. Damn it. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to up my rhetorics. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen next. All right. Hello again, esteemed officer. And um, welcome to crime, romance, oh. and biographies of famous people. You got seventy-two percent now in drama. Convince her to let you investigate the Doom area. Helped Anionette in. Might as well try it. Seventy-two is pretty high. Nice. Deliver up to her. You silver tongue fiend. Show her what world class perfidy looks like. Wait, what if I don't want to lie? Uh, you're not lying. You're giving her peace of mind. The meanness, mean, meannesses are thus justified. Ma'am, I'm Kate. Ma'am, I came here to help. I've had a paranormal situation before. Are you sure? She looks like a little. I don't think I haven't seen Charlington's before. Piece of shit. I sense the psychotic emanation from afar. Sleepy, so sleeper beyond calls out. I'm gonna say I returned from the void. A pair detective from a long line of pair detective. You know, perfect that you look nothing like one. You're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being blunt, but you look like one. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You need the booze to focus, all right? The tenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then. Walks her nose. Row her world. He thinks I'll compose some notes. I like this one. It's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. Yeah, that's a good pun. Um, I admit I have my fair share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is paraphia psychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Because that's what I do, baby. Here we go. <laughs> I'm a vo I am mean, I'm the void revenant. I have the power to debat all the bad energies. The word brought me here in the first place. The Samenese blood also runs through me. The price Samenese? Oh. It means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. Oh my god, she's crazy. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. Are you certain you can keep us safe? Help us and keep us safe. I can't allow collateral down to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family's safe. The phantoms are no match for me. Just ask my partner, Kim. He'll vouch for me. I think Kim would vouch for me, honestly. The tenant has not been listening. Uh, um, he mumbles in minor confusion. You put him on the spot. Certainly so, ma'am. I can assure you my partner is eminent in this particular field. <laughs> okay. Uh, she suffered nervously. If you promise, good officer, she pauses. You might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. A hand on your heart. 
Thank you, sir. Tim and Sai of Relief. There's one more thing I haven't told you about. The, enti the entity? <laughs> Don't act as right. You know of these things, sire. Of course. The entity. Close your eyes for I have sense as presence. You have? She gasped. The entity takes the form of a woman. <laughs> a witch, probably. Uh, I suspect that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Do you know that she lives inside a chimney? Chimney. The passage is between heaven and hell, of course. I mean, it goes to the sky and goes to a burning fire. It makes sense. Yes, the chimney is part of the burn the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. She shivers. She should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please return to me after you looked around. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. Um, what you discover in there? Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Yeah, I assume this is nothing. Imagine ghosts are actually real in this game. Uh, put the curtains on. They're like so quiet. You can see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cinemies wards. A shadow looming over it as an omen. A small terrified owl escapes from her present as she tries her best to look away. A round face buries in her hands. Okay. Just a uh, regular office space. That must be the door. Um, ghostly silhouette of hair dryers. Uh, vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. That's a. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your mask. <laughs> Funny. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens of Sammy's trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Let's knock on the door. Only an echo. No one is there. A hollow out dark echo. I lost the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Uh, okay, maybe we should enter for it. Now I'll go. Open the door and enter. I got a flashlight too. I think the music comes back. Oh, Kim, you want to talk about something? What is this place? It looks like a gym, yeah. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. He draws a stripe on the dusty floor with his foot. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in the faint beam of daylight falling into the wind from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yeah, I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. Sounds good. <laughs> Alright, hold up. Let me get the flashlight out. <laughs> I think I can't put the, the boombox away. Put the boombox away for now. Look at this. Sand is dripping from the punch bag. Goes up somewhere. The poster says "Citrus Fortress," and the rest is worn off. Smells like leather and sweat. Worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. Okay, yeah, this is just a gym. We got a kettleball over there. Weird looking kettleball. <gasps> oh, oh. Hey! We can, <laughs> we can replace the bot shot putt, whatever it's called. The bully. Alright. Is that everything? I guess not. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its white plates. A 60 kilogram. It tries to hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast is dealing with. Lift them. There are no colors on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. There's no way. Notice collars. Why does it feel so familiar? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. You better not touch them. 
kind of bastard would just remove the colors. This it should be a family. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulation. This gym was still operating, but it isn't anymore. No one's supposed to come here, right? Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's a stale smell of rubber, the squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knees against the mat, and the whistle. And then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. Memory from the young another life when you were young and fit. Okay. I guess could we guess go head up. Um, this is caved in. Always blocked by old window panes and debris. Okay, let's go in here then. Um, uh, there's one here. Uh, why I'm stairs are you in the dark stuff and mounted? A strange or how to feel the strange liquid. I think I saw something move over here. Um, might be the shadow. Uh, airship rotors covered in spider webs that remind you of blades. Weird mannequins here. A uh, naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. But where are the clothes they used to display? Oh, money. Um, blue velvet, soft to touch, moth bitten. Like that. Go in here. I like the music now. So mysterious and spooky. It's like I actually enter a, a haunted house. Uh, slit stream painted. Okay. What's this? Is boss saw? A uh, steel water blade bearing a slipstream logo. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and the water blades both bear the same slipstream logo. It seems like they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivot to produce the other. Um, but the question is, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? It's a good question. Yeah, we don't know anything for sure. Not quite. Do you do know that there's something unusual about this company business model? What's in here? Is it more money? Production schedule, filament memory? What the fuck is that? Um, this cube like cross filament feels oddly fragile in your hand. Its intricate structure covered in dust, silver tape on the side reads production schedule. Note this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Okay, I don't know where we get one. Yo, Kim, are you scared? If you want, you can hold my hand. Um, uh, what is that? Project Dreadboard. Your flashlight slides over an or old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes, like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These leaf pointing ear creatures appear to be different types of Welkins. You can make out autumn, autumn candle Welkins casting wax based magic. Translucent Welkins with organs shining under their skin, and even ether Welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are those creatures? Fantasy of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins towering among the rest appears to be different. Definitely welcome, this is important. <laughs> Um, it's Vara Hamri, a high Welkin. Welkin. His face, white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin Supremus. Note says all non welcome races will be purged. Um, a bunch of nonsense. Um, the lieutenant can't help but comment. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. These look like a concept art for a project. It's not really real. Hmm. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Hmm. Political commentary. That one has a giant beard too. Kim nods at the Welkin facial features. Facial hair. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. <laughs> um, Look at the photos. 
The photo collage depicts barren icy landscape wrapped in pectoral night. You see permafrost and glacier landform, dead trees groaning under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlement on dried up riverbeds, so it's like frostpunk. Um, you see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers by Borrow de Wake. Yorts under the snow, great mammoth like beasts of burden. A bit dark and cold, this vision feel also feels cozy in your own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our world. Um, the heat death scenario, desperate fight for gemo geothermal energy engulf the world as war becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Expect the schedule. From the year 50, Crypto Word Sprint Daily GPI, Grand Scheme of Production and Money. It looks like a bit like academic calendar, only much brutal. Keep reading, what happened? As time goes on, the number on the boxes grows rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the field final days. Only failure and regret dwells in this region. Then it looks like the field looks like they didn't make it. Yeah. Check the notes. The handwriting okay. I'll just read the hand the, the note part. Call in, tune out, rural untether. Heat death of the universe. The full text reads, Heat death of the universe is the new black. The biggest advancement in world playing system since the 30s. Okay, what's in here? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube sharp... Oh! The radio computer, says the lieutenant, watching you circle around the machine. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. Sounds suspicious and a bit cautious. Um, what he means is this: these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? Um, do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Turn on the machine. The machine lights up like some kind some prehistoric animal stirring from the slumber, revealing versus play. Play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine center compartment is open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brewing. Some cable have been left tangling disconnected. Yeah. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Yep. Inspect the production schedule. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Play. Um, a bar of fabric right above the keyboard start producing a small hum. Sound static seeps through the machine planner magnetic drive. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling old and cutting into the air. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on Rue de saint Gaslema. This is East Incendiary Repeater Station 1. Please repeat, is this the production schedule? Um, why do you call me Fortress Accident? Is the company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to? Huh. You have any information about this company? One moment, you hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Um, Fortress Accident SCA produced revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. Oh. It's not bad. Yeah. Not so conceptual. Hmm. She used some. And what's that? This interactive call-in radio play. Any other question you hear, ask when the connection finally improves. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Uh, you mean that glowing thing that I put inside? Yes, that is the production schedule. Yes. Good. Repeat the password. Oh. Password, of course. You would have a password. Uh, that's why there's a human administrator involved. Um, can you give me a hint? No. Uh, this is the police. Please open this thing. Uh, the voice recites, I am contra contract allily, contractually obligated to protect the privacy of the filament holder for its accident. Without filing a warrant with Lentinol, I cannot give you the access to the filament. 
I'm afraid we're not doing that unless we have to wait, want to wait for a month. Okay, I don't know the password. Receive, I registered this long in the temp. Don't worry, password will have a way of turning up sooner or later. Uh, where are you, a machine, or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I'm 74 years old, and my name is... Bon... Boni. Tenon whispers into here. She repeats password. Programming people are all paranoid. Um. Okay, but where are you, and how do you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulidinian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, some static, then I am sitting into my in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. Doesn't she get lonely in there? Doesn't it get lonely there, doing this job? Lonely. For the first time, you hear her chuckle through the rust of static. Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does it. All right. Um. Stop that. Yep. Uh, take it, and just leave. Actually, let me turn it off. Can I turn it off, or is this permanently? I guess it's permanently just on. Mm -hmm.